And from child star to adult artist. I mean, we've seen artists do this from Britney and Slay for you, Miley yes. Can't Be Tamed. Like, yes. how is this era gonna feel for you to just finally let it go and be who yes. you authentically are? No one has made this dramatic of a change yet. No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. I am the first in the generation. It is very scary. Come as a bitch, I should've known better. So guys, honestly, <laughs> That song has literally been playing every day on my Spotify. So my favorite playlist on Spotify is Rap Caviar, especially when I'm in the gym. So while I'm there struggling with my life, like lifting weights and all these things, and I'm just listening to J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Future, Nicki Minaj, I'm listening to Kama, like literally in the middle of rap. Like Spotify has really been pushing that out and I'm, I'm not mad, I'm really really not mad but today, in case you guys have not gotten the vibe, we are speaking about Jojo Siwa. Jojo Siwa, she's shaking things up. You probably know her for her big balls and her squeaky clean image but now she's ditching that for a tougher bad girl vibe. That is why I am looking at this. So in case you guys could not even tell from this that I am queer, I'm here to like put it out there because I'm trying to reinvent a different type of genre and what's that gay commentary people don't really do that so i'm going to i'm going to be the first person to do it so wherever you see me you would know that yeah i like women too <laughs> Oh my god, guys, this don't even take me serious. Anyway, so back to Jojo Siwa. So basically, she actually made waves like recently because in LA, she went visiting a sex shop lately and like she came out and the whole world actually knew that she actually went into a sex shop. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'm not laughing, but this is so funny. So literally, in case you don't know Jojo, she used to be a star on Dance Mom. But now there is gossips about her feuding with Justin Bieber and that baby. That baby? I think I could understand Justin Bieber, but that baby. <laughs> Honestly, why is she feuding with that baby? Like that baby is like this tough rapper with Jojo Siwa. Anyways, she's come out to say that she's the next Elvis Presley. She also dropped a new song called Come as a out bitch. That came out April 5th and according to her this song is definitely not for kids Jojo you coming out with some new music what yes what? girl tell us about it I can say look I got this really cool tattoo on my hand and uh actually yesterday I gave the heads up like hey it's not for kids anymore warning the following content is not made for children and may be disturbing or offensive to some viewers may contain sexual themes violence, strong language, dramatic scenarios, and flashing lights. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi guys, my name is Joel and if it's the first time, thank you so much for stopping by. Kindly like and share this video. It would mean the whole world to me. So basically on this channel, I speak about anything I want to speak about and I shared more educated light on different topics, whether it's viral or not. Kindly subscribe if you haven't, comment your thoughts and please engage as much as you can because it would of course help the algorithm to push out my video. Thank you. Please, thank you so much because literally I think YouTube shows my video to just 14,000 people or 20,000 people and that is so bad at least let me have like 2 million impressions not 14,000 or 20,000 impressions <laughs> yeah I actually put a lot in making this video but thank you guys so much and now let's go back to speaking about Jojo Siwa Jojo Siwa became famous when she was like 12 years just after she had left the dance mom in 2015 and then she built up her fan base by starting a YouTube channel and soon after she began her music career. Nickelodeon, they saw her popularity on YouTube and Instagram and then they signed a very big deal with her when she was just 14 years old. This deal actually covered a lot of things. It covered things like products, TV shows, social media, it covered events, it covered like even up to her music. And since joining Nickelodeon, she's been on TV shows and she's also been in movies and she's been in a few Nickelodeon specials too. Recently at the iHeart Radio Music Awards, Jojo, she spoke about how focused she is on music now. She mentioned her new song, Karma, even showed off the outfits that she wears in the video. No one knows everything but like four people. 
it's all choreographed, it's all planned, and uh, the world's only seen a little teeny tiny bit of the plan. Yeah. So I'm excited for them to get to see more, see what the full vision is, right? Because it really does paint a picture. In 2021, Jojo actually came out as gay. So since publicly sharing her sexual identity in January 2021, she's been in several relationships with influencers like. Every Cyrus, Kylie Peru, Katie Mills were friends. Purely platonic. <laughs> What's so fun? I don't know. And yeah, that's just a little bit about JoJo. So now let's go to the controversies and why everybody's like. Jojo. So Jojo, she's actually faced some tough times lately and her makeup line with Claire's got recalled because of safety worries about asbestos and then there was a music video with a circus theme that got criticism because people said that one dancer was accused of wearing blackface but Jojo, she's come out to say that that is not true but Jojo... She seems to disagree with a lot of things and we're going to get to that but she disagrees with a lot of things that I'm like, girl, girl. She's also had some reported fights with Justin Bieber and <laughs> that baby which I still can't even get over but yeah. There was an interview where Jojo spoke about bringing back a certain type of pop music which she called the gay pop and at first everybody was like, like, <laughs> people were like, is this girl okay? Gay pop? Uh, obviously she faced backlash for this but i think people like obviously the you know how the media is they don't show the whole story but i think when the whole video came out or when she was re-interviewed she actually mentioned that songs like lady gaga's applause or miley cyrus can't be tamed uh examples of what she was talking about but she said that some people actually misunderstood her because people misunderstood her people now thought that she claimed to invent the genre which she clarified that she didn't that she just wants to shed more light on it and if you think about it like people don't really really sing about gay pop any longer like you don't hear that kind of music any longer i'm not doing lady gaga's time she sang that oh god that, that the, I was like a huge Lady Gaga fan. <laughs> that era, I can remember, I think I was in secondary school. I would go to the computer, in the computer room, to listen to Lady Gaga and Beyonce in school, in secondary school. I would just put on the headphones like, oh my days, like, I can't believe this. You guys are really, really enjoying in this generation. Because then, I would like go to the computer room to listen to Lady Gaga, Beyonce, like, yeah, Rihanna. Mm, technology has really, really evolved. In another interview, she mentioned that she wanted one of her exes on her podcast. So basically, I think I had to read it. They asked her, oh, we had you already in a new podcast. Who would you like to invite on this podcast and she came out and she said my ex dream guest on my podcast oh my gosh i mean honestly let's find think about one of my exes of everybody in this world her ex before I go any further, I just want to use this opportunity to say, first of all, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It really does mean the world to me. And secondly, I just want to use this opportunity to talk about my own journal. So basically, journaling has been a part of me since 2021. And I am so honored to have my own journal. Like literally, it is literally the best thing ever. So this is the ultimate manifestation and dream journal. And honestly, this journal is what you need. It's like the all-in-all -all journal. So this journal is not dated. And here I just speak briefly about the journal. And you have things like law of attraction, brain dump, shadow work, dream journal, and weekly reflection. And that being said, after every day, you have like just words of inspiration after every day when you fill the journal. Like I said, the journal is not data, so you could start at any time of the year. And it's also 30 days because I feel like if it's 365 days, you're literally going to low-key have heart attack. So <laughs> it's just better when it's 30 days, which like 
gives you the motivation to journal more so the first page we have the law of attraction and the law of attraction has sections like it has gratitude manifestation release gratitude and affirmation and down here is where you your, you track your emotions for the day i'm someone who journals at nights and i understand people journal in the morning so you could reflect on your day before and just write it down then here we have the scripting so here you script whatever you want in the future and just write it down so that when it happens you could come back and read your scripting then we have the brain dump section so we all know during the day our mind has like several different tabs that open and again like if you thought about something and you're like oh my god maybe i'll forget you could just write it down in the brain dump and just dump freely because honestly i don't think brain dump should have like sections just dump freely as much as you can then we have the shadow work the shadow work page has original prompt for you to fill out so in case you do not know what shadow work is shadow work is literally a way to channel your inner child it just helps to heal your past traumas and places you've been as a child there are prompts or questions that ask you things that will make you really really dig into yourself and wonder and think about why you're the way you are so they are all original shadow work prompts we'll write it down when you're journaling after that we have the dream journaling section so if you're like someone like me who forgets their dream but once you wake up you can just write the dream here we have section like your thoughts before sleep we have prompts for the dream so it just helps you better and at the end of the week we have weekly reflection where you reflect your week here we have the goals for next week the unaccomplished goals for the past week the accomplished goals the habits you're retaining the habits you're eliminating or the habits you've eliminated and after your weekly reflection weekly reflection is in every page like i said this journal is not dated so any time of the day is which we will have after every day we have like something to just keep you going throughout the night to the next day till you come back for your next journal and then quality does not even play like the quality doesn't play we have paperback and hardcover copy in case you want any of them honestly this journal is everything to me because this is like literally part of my life and also at the end we have original taxi day shadow work prompts and you have a little letter from me or message from me and guys that is it and now let's get right into this video so speaking about jojo's controversy the biggest controversy actually hit in february 2024 jojo was accused of mistreating members of her pop girl group xomg pop and this was a group that Han her mom put together it was more like a reality show I think they were trying to emulate the dance moms where she came from and the accusation included harsh rehearsals like pushing kids to cry on camera and not treating injuries properly allegedly and these are all allegations so there's this girl that was part of the group her name is leah sanderson so her mom her mom's name is angie her mom was the only parent in jojo siwa's dance group revolution to just come out and speak out publicly and basically the others supposedly did not speak up because they signed an nda and it was only leah's mom that did not sign an nda so she could come out and speak so anyways angie said that the kids weren't paid directly for their social media posts their brand deals or their merchandise sales and angie even said that she had to clean toilets for jojo's mom jessaline because she was low on cash and that was how she could get cash from her oh this is legit she also claimed that leah actually got fired after angie complained about how bad things were but then she begged to keep her spot in the group leah she was one of the original members of the group and she actually left like a year and a half ago jessaline and jojo they come out to deny this strongly and they also said that the accusation went against everything jojo believes in but Jojo believes in a lot of weird things, which we'll talk about later on in this video. The Siwa song, Karma, was crafted by the acclaimed songwriter Desmond Child and a music production duo called The Rock Mafia. So Rock Mafia, they are known for shaping the music careers of Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus, and Demi Lovato. The thing is, I don't think Jojo Siwa can sing. I don't think she can sing, you guys. I mean, like, look at this video. But you're still, you're still a traitor. Yeah, 
yeah that video sounded like she literally hurt herself and to be fair people actually think that she's doing this whole personal to distract the world from the accusations that xomg pop members actually levied against her but i'm like oh my god oh my god if that is i don't believe i can i refuse to believe that i refuse to believe that she's been cringy just to distract people from that like who is her advisor who is her publicist if this is what they could come up with you should fire everybody there's also this clip of jojo like going home from a sex toy which i said earlier and she was holding a giant penis girl girl not her holding the penis in her hand and going into the car a car that has her face all over it i would you even see any grown adult putting would you pasting their face all over their car to me that's what children do i don't know man like she's still a child i'm not gonna lie she's still a child she's putting her all into this whole rebrand and i'm so confused like isn't there anyone around her to like advise her better wait i know miley went through this whole cycle did did ariana go through it i don't think she did Selena gomez she didn't go, she was deeply in love with justin bieber so yeah she wouldn't have had the time but yeah miley Cyrus she went through this whole cycle i remember i was still like really relatively young when it all played out in our faces and then i was like oh my god but yeah but did selena go through this too please tell me in the comment section i don't think she did she was deeply in love with justin bieber she still is allegedly but yeah i think what's actually crazy about this jojo's era besides her whole interview her music video etc is that she's putting pressure on everyone and she's making this like a whole big deal when in reality she is still the same like to me she's she's still the same i've refused to see her as a grown adult i mean like there's a way you could come out and rebrand yourself and people would just automatically be like oh my god she's actually grown like arena grande i don't really see her as a child any longer arena grande one time i was talking her youtube and i was looking at videos of her when she was young posting videos on youtube i was like oh my god <laughs> When it comes to Jojo, I mean, her aesthetic is not really that different, honestly. Yeah, she's come out looking like Elvis Presley, according to her. But to me, her aesthetic is really not that different. Her makeup is still, like, kind of the same, if I want to be very, very serious. And, oh, one thing that's changed, though, is her voice. Like, I, I, I don't know if she really speaks like this or not. I got a question. If you could have one heaven phone call, this is a random heaven phone call, okay? Nothing... I'm too serious. If it was serious, I'd call grandma, grandpa, uncle I never got to meet, someone like that. But, <laughs> let's see. To me, she's a kid in many ways. Does she really speak like this? Like, hey, it's not for kids anymore. Because how do you go from this to this? Honestly, nah. No offense, no shade, but in that video, she actually sounds like a 45-year-old woman that, like, lives on cigarettes and, because we know that cigarette changes your voice over time yeah because obviously i think it affects your vocal cord or whatever jojo one thing i noticed about her when i was like going through her page to prepare for this video is that she gets gas a lot like she's always in the fuel station for some reason getting gas i'm like do you live in your car why are you driving to <gasps> oh my god like oh my days anyway speaking of miley back in 2010 miley cyrus she was transitioning from her disney image to establish herself as a more serious musician her album can't be tamed actually faced like mixed reviews for its departure from an early persona she also had this era called the bangers era and it's actually no surprise that she serves as an inspiration for jojo siwa's own evolution even though miley yeah she went wild but it wasn't like this it wasn't like this and i understand jojo she's like oh everybody sees me as a child i don't want people to see me as a child but girl like yeah it's not our fault miley cyrus she came up with like songs that are bangers since today like for example and we can stop yo if i start playing that song i'm not going to stop i will play it and play it and play it and play it till my brain is tired of hearing it and then i'll give it a break and play it again last year me and that song oh my days i was even seeing my song myself in the music video too and then i came in like a wrecking ball guys i can't sing i know and that song oh my god I remember when i watched the video i was like oh my god what are parents <laughs> 
I was like, well, her dad, well, her dad let her film a video like this naked on a ball. Like, how did she get on the ball? The, the cameraman and camera women see her naked. Do they have a video of her stuck naked? Like, I was thinking about all this stuff. Like, what? What? Why are you <laughs> so the connection that Jojo Siwa has to Rock Mafia and that Miley Cyrus also has to Rock Mafia has sparked speculation that Karma might have originally been intended for Miley. However, there was a video that featured a TikToker named Adam who confirms this. So Karma by Jojo Siwa is actually a scrapped Miley Cyrus song, and I'm not joking. So back in 2011, which is when Miley was in her Can't Be Tamed era, a popular update account for her said that they heard from a very reliable source that Miley had a song called Karma's a Bitch. And then Miley seemed to confirm this in 2012 when she was in a Twitter conversation with the producers of Can't Be Tamed, Rock Mafia, and they even responded to her tweet with hashtag karma's a bitch. If you look at the writing credits for Karma by Jojo Siwa, you'll see that Jojo isn't listed. She took no part in writing the song, but who is listed? Rock Mafia as the producers and writers and Antonia Armato as a writer. And Antonia wrote for a bunch of Disney artists back in the day, including Miley. I get why Miley didn't release it because she was still under Disney at the time. So they probably heard her say bitch and they were like, uh-uh, not in our watch. But yeah, say what you want about Karma by Jojo Siwa, but it's kind of a serve for her to get a scrapped Miley song as her first single of her rebrand. So while Jojo shift to like a more mature image has faced criticisms, Miley hasn't commented on the matter yet, but then again, I'm like, what do people want her to comment? Like, what do you, what do you want her to say? Because I'll be like, yeah, the song was originally for me. Miley's above that. Like now she's private. She's like living her life. Like you should leave her alone. Leave my girl alone. Like she is, I'm sure she's sitting in millions right now. Interestingly, there was a singer named Brit who released a version of Karma in 2012. I, I watched this video and I was checking the comments. And oh my god, everybody was commenting, everybody was praising her, saying this should have come out. I don't know what. Just, so, in case the angle has changed, my battery died, so I just put in a new battery. In the world of music, it's very rare for just one person to write a song, except when Nicki Minaj brought out the pink Lamborghini just to race with China and the ring with China and the race. <laughs> I'm such a barb and Nikki is coming to London next month. Moving on, big hits like Beyonce's Who Run the World, girls. So big hits like Beyonce's Run the World, Taylor Swift's Bad Blood, and Camila Cabello's Havana Nana. I'm not a fan of Camila. Um, she is racist, allegedly. I think she is racist. And uh, yeah, so these songs they have like multiple names that have been credited for writing, and this means that claiming a song as entirely one person's creation is uncommon, especially in popular genres like pop, rock, or hip hop, where many people often collaborate on a single song. But the thing is, in this Jojo song, literally, she didn't even like write a single word like her name is not written as a writer so she's just like a reciter if that makes sense so now let's go to the sad conclusion after this video i would want you if you want to watch this video and here i speak about the over sexualization and the adultification of celebrity children at such an early age jojo and miley they've gone through it and as we know jojo has been in the limelight since she was a child like literally a child she started on a toxic show that's a dance mom is it not weird that little children are literally dancing for adults like i also want to do a video on you know the girl that dances for sia because recently i watched sia's videos and i was like this looks so uncomfortable if you guys want a video on that let me know i want to talk on that anyways so she was on a toxic show dance mom and her mom just always wanted her daughter to be a star by all means in dance mom jojo she defended abby abby is the host or the coach of the show she defended abby and she said that abby was just a very tough coach that wanted the best from them to abby listen i will always remember where i came from i really respect the show and i respect what the show did for me for maddie for kalani for kendall for nia they all act as if i had nothing to do with the show and oh it was toxic they were stars they were making money they were on top of the world you're just gonna dump me abby actually taught me a lot i carry a lot of what she taught me with me we were shooting the television show and all those kids were talking about boys. Jojo was on that computer. She was uploading her own videos. She was hustling back then. She's a household name. Every story you walk into, it's not going to stop. Jojo and Miley, they've been breadwinners for their families since they were children, which can actually be a lot. 
on the call her daddy podcast jojo stated how she moved her parents out of her own house and when she was 16 her girlfriend moved in with her this girl was forced to grow up so early or is it just me because that's the vibe i'm guessing she was forced to grow up so early the house so i'm keeping the house yeah we say like it's kind of been like our like funny joke like our ongoing joke like my parents oh they're finally old enough to move out on their own oh like God. it's been like oh i didn't really realize till i was maybe 17 or 18 like oh oh i pay for everything for everyone, everyone. like but then i was like wait i get to take care of my family. I get to take care of the people that I love. They gave up so much for me. Like my mom would always say like, you would do anything for a stranger off the street, right? And I, of course, like if anybody needed anything and I could help, I would. And she's like, so think of your family like that. But I've been like, I need, I call it, <laughs> this is so, ew, I hate these words, but like mommy, mom. And I've told, like we've had to find the dynamic. It's shockingly, it's gotten harder as I've gotten older. Yeah. But I, I've like, I want, I want you to be more my mom, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to talk to you more about mom things than work things. And then you know Nick Vile. Yep. One day I was with Nick, and I was ranting about things, and I was like, all my mom wants to do is talk about work, and I just want her to be my mommy, mom. Tell me, tell me what to do. And he was like, I'm never gonna tell you what to do, but I am gonna tell you what's going on. And he gave me the best advice I've ever received in this situation. He told me he said that essentially I was the problem. I, I'm the one changing. She is doing what she's done her whole life. That, that, that is severely toxic. That is so toxic. Also, the fact that Nikki actually gave this response is crazy. The gaslighting, the invalidation of it all. Like, what's wrong with wanting a mommy mom? Watch me for some time now. You know, I've kind of spoken about how I have been a victim. Not a victim, now. Nah i've had like mommy issues <laughs> okay. so basically if you watch me closely i've spoken about having mommy issues since i was a child so yeah i, I have mommy issues and uh, even when my mom was alive i didn't really get along with her my dad remarried i don't really get along with my stepmom so i'm more with daddy's girl and i've had like mommy issues which is just beyond the surface but my close friends are my siblings they know they know what's up my best friend she's so close to her mom that's literally her best friend all my days like that's her best friend right now they're in portugal for her mom's birthday so like all of you guys can literally see like sometimes i'm like oh my god you're such a very good daughter like i'm like i wish i had such you know close connection with like a motherly figure in my life but i guess god was like no another thing i think is that jojo she's very immune to abuse more like she thinks that it's normal she defended colleen bollinger who was exposed for allegedly being a child predator yeah she defended her quite sad the internet can take a lie and run so far with it so far that it's to the point where you just anyways you said that when she was 16 she had a 23 year old best friend what is a 16 and 23 year old speaking about like what, what are you guys 23 what are you speaking about she to me i think she just jumped a whole twin stage i feel like she had no childhood because she was always in the limelight always made to work since she was nine and she has also expressed her desire to date someone older than her like maybe nine years older eight seven to eight to nine years older but like for me dating is like 19 but i would prefer like 22 i really just like older than me but to like 28 ooh. and so where that's different is a lot of 20 year olds are just figuring out their life which i think is why i prefer 27 28 29 because they've got it figured out you know what i mean right girl girl and i'm not going to come here and sit down and judge this girl because honestly I'm about to tell you guys a story. When I was 12, my boyfriend, my first boyfriend was 21 years. Yo, I kid you not. I kid you not. Like my first boyfriend, when I was 12, 12, nine years older than me, like he was 21 years. And then I thought it was a very big flex. I'm not gonna lie. Like people I told around me, like my friends and all, they didn't see like it as a big deal. I mean, like I was dating an older guy and I was in secondary school. I was in secondary school back in Nigeria and like my friends were dating like older men. So it was something kind of normal, if that makes sense. But like now I'm an adult, like that was not normal. I was literally in like year nine. 
and he was already in university so in nigeria that's gs3 and my mom she found out she sees my phone but i just thought that my mom hated me and you know she didn't want the best for me i remember my brother was like he's too old for you i'm like don't tell me what to do i do not respect <laughs> i'm that annoying younger sister but thank god like we are done nothing sexual like thank god we are done nothing sexual that's one thing i'm very grateful for he never like pressured me to do anything sexual and during holidays because in my secondary school i was a boy that was in a boarding school so during holidays we would meet in the state library my dad would drop me in the state library and then when my dad dropped me in the state library i now literally call him to come so he would come we would talk i would just hug him on the aisle oh my god Oh my god i remember our first kiss i think i was like um 15 or something oh my god i'm cringing so i remember our first french kiss i was 15 guys i was still underaged i mean i got into university when i was 16 years yeah i was that was not normal but i actually thought it was normal that's crazy like what if what if we had sex like what if he pressured for us to have sex but i'm glad we did not Last year, he messaged me on Instagram. He said he was married with two children or so. And I was like, oh, congrats. That was literally it. <laughs> that was literally because I had like removed him from my Instagram when I was realizing some certain thing. I think he named his child after me, which is kind of creepy. I think he told me he named his child after me. I can't remember. We dated for like close to five years on and off. And whenever I broke up, I was always the one breaking up. He would call and beg me back. He would call me back and beg me. And then it was fucked up when we broke up i was dating another elderly guy i never like really dated people that were like my age if that makes sense they were like elderly guys that were like that shouldn't have dated me if that makes sense and i'm going to go to that later on and when we break up i would date other elderly people which is crazy it's so crazy like now i'm just thinking about I'm, no I'm, I'm not just thinking about it but obviously now i've i've been old i'm like that was like a very fucked up situation but i'm so glad that i didn't do anything like sexually with any of these people because like, i was like i want to have autonomy over my body when i'm 18 then i'll make the decision but i'm so glad that i never did anything with all these people and the last time i was that we broke up i was the one that broke up and i begged him or the second to the last time we broke up i was the one that broke up and then when he didn't come back to ask us to be together i would like i went to him and i was like oh we should be together and he was like i'm always the one breaking up and he was tired of me breaking up for no reason so he was not going to come to me to ask me to be together and if i wanted to be with him i have to be sure that this is what i want yo yo i was just i was i was i was a child i was old enough to be his child like so back to jojo jojo couldn't like see how inappropriate age dynamic is just i couldn't i just couldn't see how inappropriate the age dynamic was like my brother told me i'm like shut the fuck up and if you watched my toxic mom video i spoke about how i was sexually assaulted from a very young age literally from five years old by different people around me like elderly men that's why sometimes men irritate me i'm sorry if you're a man i don't mean that in a malicious way but like sometimes i just get to relieve my <laughs> my trauma and that's why physical touch is one of my least love languages so yeah like i was abused like oh my god this is getting so serious but we're getting somewhere so i spoke about how i was literally you know sexually assaulted from a very young age literally from five years by different people around me like my dad's best friend at that time my grandma's relative my uncle it's just so disgusting so like dating someone way older than me made so much sense because i'd not processed the trauma i was going through and the shit i was going through i'm in no way coming out to say that jojo was essayed as a child i'm just sharing my own opinions but there are factors that could cause this we don't know what went on behind the scenes jojo she's a marketing genius and i would give her that and i mean she she said it she was like what's been going on in your head the past three days like it or not what's been in your head the last three days i was a bad girl Cow as a bitch, I should have known better. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. She even came out to say that karma is everyone's guilty pleasure. Oh my days. Number one, they're the reason that it charted before it even came out. And number two, whether people like to admit it or not, karma is a lot of people's guilty pleasure. Karma is a bitch. I should have known better. And to be like, see, I'm singing it. I'm talking about it. So I think it's everyone's guilty pleasure. I get it. It's all fun and games. But let's also remember that Jojo is still a child. She is a young adult. To me, she's a child. I can't. I can't see her as an adult. I'm sorry. No matter how much she tries. Oh my days. Oh my days. She would hate me if she had that. Jojo, if you're watching, hi. <laughs> She is still a young adult and she's still figuring her life out. Um, our brains aren't fully developed till you're like 25. The thing is, Jojo is in the public light, so everybody's seen this. And yeah, because we've done cringy things. She will look at this when she's like 30 and she'll cringe. So our brains, they do not fully develop to your 25. So it's just very understandable if she seems very unsure of herself. So some people actually think that she's being fake to distract from the accusations against her and her mom which if the accusations are true it isn't far-fetched but then again i'm thinking at what expense at what expense do you want to ridicule yourself like this in front of the entire whole world like but at the end of the day she's just a person that's trying to find her way and seriously someone actually needs to take her phone away because why are people letting her embarrass herself like this i think I think she just has like yes men around her and she pays that bill so i mean would you want to bite the finger that fits you no except you're a cut <laughs> yeah i just wanted to give this one light hearted and just i hope you guys enjoyed this i don't know why this is long but yeah before i go please do not forget to purchase my journal the link is in my description box and also in my about section so just click on the link you could get the hard copy or the paper bag this is the paper bag literally it is top quality it's top quality thank you guys so much for supporting me honestly it really means the world to me thank you for even watching this video thank you so much for your i see you guys comment all the day every day it means the world to me share this video this and till next time let me go and eat i'm not eating today and it's 4 30 i love you guys so much bye come as a bitch i should have known better come as a bitch i should have known better